Hello everybody, this is Thomas Hecker from Germany. I'm very happy that this presentation is a co-production together with Nicolas Kalanzis. Um, the Kalanzis and the Hecker families have a very long connection through our profession as FDEs. So for me, it's a real honor and uh, a pleasure at the same time to have this session here together uh, with Nikos. So the topic of our session is the current situation of conclusion reporting in Germany and Greece and the use of the official German verbal scale of conclusions. Um, I will tell you a little bit about the history behind the development of the scale as well as um, how it's been used today. And uh, Nikos will then guide you through the situation in Greece and give you some uh, very interesting insights as well. So um, let's start with a little quote from Lothar Michel. Perhaps doubt should be the most important principle of the scientific approach, refusing to accept something as true, even if there seems to be definite proof. Uh, that, that was published in uh, Lothar Michaels, uh, Michel's book in 1984. So um, what's the background about uh, the scale we are talking about today. In Berlin in 2005, forensic handwriting experts from the government and the part of the private sector agreed to use a common probability scale for verbal conclusions. So the development was um, initiated by the Forensic Science and Technolo Technology Police Records Commission, composed of the director of uh, federal and state forensic science institutes in Germany, coordinated by my father, Dr. Manfred Hecker. Um, the four authors, um, like um, Norbert, Nor Norbert Köller, Kai Nissen, and um, Michael Ries and Erwin Sadorf, developed a probability scale for the standardization of terminology used to express conclusions in expert opinions. All of them were working for the German police um, when this paper was published. The probab probability scale was published in 2004 under the, under the title Probability Conclusions in Expert Opinions on Handwriting and is still available also in English. By the way, it's uh, free to download on the BKA website uh, in PDF form, but be aware uh, the edition is bilingual, so the first part is the German version and there's actually no indication that the second half of the book is in English. Uh, we will provide you a link uh, where you can download that book uh, later in this presentation. So um, here we have the verbal scale that's been used in Germany um, for a long time. It lists the probabilities for each of two complementary hypotheses uh, as pairs of degrees of probability. Of course, the complementary verbal expression uh, plausibility add up to a value of one. So for example, with a slightly predominant probability for the um, hypothesis on the one hand, the probability of the alternative hypothesis would be with slightly moderate probability and so on. The question now is, how is the probabilistic scale allocated to the verbal scale? So this is the concept. The complementary probability is expressed as a fraction. This fraction is to be subtracted from one. The complementary value of the opposing statement is represented um, by the subtrahend. Um, the basic idea underlying the progression, progression is that there is a logarithmic uh, relationship between information and probability. Rounded fractions and rounded percentages values are used in the interest of, in the interest of practicability. The application of conclusion is based on the Bayesian uh, logic in court proceedings as a whole. The result of all this together leads into the following table. So here you can see um, the verbal scale um, allocated with the values of the probabilistic scale. So um, in the first column we see the verbal expression uh, we already saw before. And the second one you can uh, see the fraction and in the last column 
uh, you see the um, allocated probabilistic scale. So for example, the verbal expression with a very high probability allocates with a value of 99%. Um, here we can see a graphic that illustrates um, the logarithmic progression. So it's uh, important to understand that this is not linear and uh, in that uh, graphic you can find um, all the uh, verbal scales as well as the percentages and the resulting verbal probability scale uh, shown here uh, as the yellow line. In actual practice in Germany, a difference of one degree on the probability scale assigned by experts is acceptable. If uh, two experts uh, have a bigger difference, then there needs to be, <laughs> let's say, some discussion. Um, a few words regarding the standardization of terminology. Uh, the concept of probability is defined and specified by the Kolmogorov uh, axioms and the concept of subjective personal probability. Thus, a certain degree of standardization has already been established for which there is no alternative. The individual levels on the numerical scale, which are to approach the values of 1 or 0 asymptotically, remain to be specified. Conclusions regarding probability should be expressed verbally, accompanied by corresponding, corresponding subjective quantitative values. It's also recommended that the probability scale specifying the verbal and the quantita quantitative levels be enclosed, enclosed, enclosed with the expert's opinion. So let's see what the situation looks in Greece and please welcome Nicolas to the session. Thank you, Thomas. Now, moving further south, in Greece, the situation is far less organized. Currently, there are two organizations that deal with question documents. One deals only with forensic handwriting experts and unfortunately is dominated by graphologists. The other one, the Hellenic Association of Forensic Science, includes representatives from all forensic science disciplines. Unfortunately, neither have a uniform reporting scale or system. So in Greece, forensic handwriting and question document reports will use one of the three categories of verbal scale systems. The first category involves individual systems of the examiner who is writing the report, usually using ambiguous terms without any definition or explanation of the difference between them and no reference to the literature. The second category involves a small, small minority that uses the official German scale. And the third category that involves mainly members of the Graphologist Association involves the so-called nine-step ASDM NFEX FBI scale. Now, the ASDM NFEX FBI scale is an amalgam of the ASDM E1658 uh, standard from 2012 uh, and a combination with the uh, scale that has been used by NFEX for its collaborative exercises over the last years. Now, attention needs to be brought to the following statement. Up to this day, there is no official or unofficial NFEX scale. The collaborative exercise scale was created to harmonize the way conclusions on collaborative exercises were reported from different NFEX member laboratories with different backgrounds and traditions, so that the steering committee and the collaborative exercise organizers can make sense of their results and have some sort of uniformity. The collaborative exercise scale is by no means a suggestion for a verbal scale system to be used in a real work case environment. This is uh, a part of a Greek report. You can see how the scale is presented as the uh, 
Uh, current nine points scale of conclusions of ASTM, MFEX, FBI. And this is the only definition given in such Greek reports. We can see that the only thing mentioned is the title of each of the nine steps. No explanation, no definition. It is our assumption that whoever created this scale uh, came across the ASTM standard and the MFEX collaborative exercise scale and consider them equal just from the fact that both of them include nine steps, not going further into the definition of each step. Plus, if you put ASTM, MFEX and FBI on the name, it feels the need to appear scientific. Now, to address this issue, me and Dr. Pertinakis from our institute we wrote a paper uh, at a law journal in Greece addressing this issue and presenting the official German scale and arguing about uh, its advantages. Now, going back to the official German scale and why our institute chose to follow that, first of all, I have to say that it is hypothesis-based, as Thomas explained, so there is a rigorous scientific process behind the creation of the scale, but uh, most importantly, in our opinion, opinion, the strength of the scale in, is in the definitions. For example, if we look at the highest level of certainty, probability bordering or certainty, the definition is as follows. The entire configuration of findings compiled, discussed and assessed as having high evidential value, that's the first check, is in complete conformity with the hypothesis, that's the second check, in all respect. And that's the third check. So you can see we have three points to check for the relation of our findings with respect to the given hypothesis. If we start going down the scale and look at very high probability, the entire configuration of findings compiled, discussed and assessed as having high evidential value, checkpoint number one, is in complete conformity with the hypothesis, number two, in nearly all respects. So in checkpoint number three, we start having some modification. Plus we have the addition of the phrase, findings which are not completely concordant and in no way relevant can be explained on the basis of method. So as we move down the steps, this definition of the relation of our findings to the given hypothesis is being modified and therefore we have a logical system of selection of the appropriate level on the scale. Now it is understood that laboratories and organi organizations will be reluctant in adopting a method constructed by someone else. Still we hope that this essay can be a valuable tool and a building block for other similarly logical and well-founded verbal scale systems. Thomas, back to you. Thank you very much, Nikos. Uh, so, as mentioned before, here's the link to the publication of the probabilistic scale. Um, for those of you who prefer not to type this long link down, we have a QR code to scan that directly brings you to the download. And again, remember it is a bilingual PDF. So even if the title is in Germany, the whole book is uh, available in English at, as the second half of the book. So this was our little presentation uh, regarding the German scale. Thanks for watching. And uh, please do not hesitate to contact us in case of any questions or if you need any additional information. Please stay safe, everybody, and I'm looking forward to see you, everybody, uh, hopefully next year. Bye-bye.